I have just downloaded every single video editing software and I'm about to rank them from best to worst and at the end of the video I will be promoting one of the video editors to the best of the best and another to the worst of the worst and to be honest with you there's one video editor in this video that completely shocked me as I think it might be so powerful that it literally has the potential to change YouTube forever these video editors are going to be ranked on three main criteria: Usability, meaning how easy it is to use. Accessibility, meaning price and how easy it is to access. And finally, how good are its results? And first, I think we just need to get it out of the way. CapCut is one of the most popular video editors in the entire world. And to be honest, it's for a good reason. If you're just starting out with YouTube, CapCut, in my opinion, is one of the best video editing software out there. It's a free mobile video editor that can create some really strong results. However, it can also be used on desktop. This is where CapCut starts to lose its credibility, as now instead of competing with iMovie, it's now competing with the likes of DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. But CapCut does have a few features that even these video editors don't have. The main one is presets. What's so good about CapCut is that you can create some of the most entertaining edits and some of the coolest filters with one simple click of a button. For example, the YouTuber Nicholas Grant tried making two identical effects one on After Effects and one on CapCut. And to his and everyone else's surprise, the effect when editing on After Effects took 30 minutes, whilst the exact same effect when it was done on CapCut took 30 seconds. And this is why so many people use CapCut and why it's also responsible for 75% of the edits you see on TikTok. Yes, this is just a preset. So for usability, I'm going to have to give CapCut a 4 out of 5. For accessibility, I'm going to have to give it a 5 out of 5 because after all, it is literally free. But when it comes to the results, whilst there are a few effects which can be replicated identically in a fraction of the time, when it comes to editing the more advanced, longer videos, CapCut just can't compete with the likes of After Effects and DaVinci Resolve. Meaning that for results, I'm going to have to give it a 2. And with a score out of 11 out of 15, I think it's going to have to go and beat here, as overall, it's a solid editor. As we saw, CapCut is more than capable when it comes to holding its own with the big softwares, so it's only right to look at them next. These are the big guys, After Effects and Premiere Pro. I think this is what the majority of you are in this video for, to see whether the massive price tags are even worth it. So, let's start with Premiere Pro. I'm just going to start by saying, Premiere Pro is extremely good. It's the go-to software for Hollywood, pretty much any big YouTuber, and it's became the industry standard for professional video editing. But it has one massive drawback. You see, with CapCut, we saw that you were able to create effects and edit entire videos with one simple click of a button. But with Premiere Pro, it's essentially the complete opposite. Unless you download tons of presets, which now are being sold to you for more than £100, you can't really expect to edit a full video in a reasonable amount of time. This is because that every single edit that you do in Premiere Pro is completely done by hand. This makes the learning curve for Premiere Pro extremely steep, meaning that if you're just starting out with content creation in YouTube, Premiere Pro will more likely than not look like a completely foreign language to you. You can't really expect to be making the best videos of Premiere Pro for the first year or so of you editing with it. Only after a year will you start to get the hang of things, by which point £250 will have already left your account. This is because the pricing of Premiere Pro is insane when comparing it to the rest of the editors on this list. And if you even dare think about cancelling your plan, you'll be hit with an equally massive cancellation fee. So, for usability, I'll give Premiere Pro a 3 out of 5. For accessibility, I'm going to have to give it a 2. But for the results, to be honest, I'll have to give it a 5 out of 5. So, with a score of 10 out of 15, I'll put it in B tier. As for an experienced editor, it's incredible. But for someone just starting out, you won't like Premiere Pro at all. But also by Adobe is After Effects. After Effects is way different to Premiere Pro, as instead of acting as a video editor, it instead acts as a way for you to create unique animations and motion graphics. This software only works if you pair it with something else, like Premiere Pro. The idea is that you get the footage into Premiere Pro, edit it, export it to After Effects, edit it in After Effects, and then put it back into Premiere Pro. Meaning that by itself, After Effects is not a good video editor, as you can't really just edit videos by themselves in the software. But what's even worse is that if you thought Premiere Pro had a steep learning curve, then you haven't ever seen After Effects. As a beginner loading up After Effects, it must be an experience. Even now, as an experienced editor myself, I still get confused loading up After Effects. And even if you're on the fence with wanting to use After Effects, you still have to get past the 
£20 per month subscription fee. And again, don't you dare think of cancelling. So for usability, I'll give After Effects a 3 out of 5. For accessibility, I'll give it a 2 out of 5. But again, you have to be honest, when someone knows how to use After Effects, they have the potential to create some of the best looking videos on the planet, meaning that the results will get a 5 out of 5, putting it in the same tier as Premiere Pro. But before we get on to potentially one of the most groundbreaking video editors out there, let's first talk about iMovie. Look, iMovie isn't bad. It comes free with your Apple products, and for a beginner just wanting to complete your first project, it isn't the worst option to choose. There's nothing to lose when using iMovie, there's no big price tag, and videos are quite easy to edit on it. Granted, no matter how long you spend mastering iMovie, you will never achieve the same quality as something like After Effects or DaVinci Resolve. But the idea is that you spend maybe a couple months familiarising yourself with how video editing works, so that you can then graduate to something still beginner friendly, but more advanced, like CapCut or DaVinci Resolve. Also, as a bonus, I think we all made those trailers as kids on iMovie, so I'll have to give it extra brownie points just for that. For usability, I'll give it a 3 out of 5. For accessibility, I'll give it a 4 out of 5. For results, unfortunately, it will be getting a 1 out of 5. And whilst it's good for beginners, I think we all saw this coming, but iMovie We'll be going in detail. But before I show you the editing software that even shocked me, it can't be a video about editing without first talking about DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci is relatively new in the market when comparing it to the big Adobe products. So this surely means that because it's less popular, then it's a worse product. But this is where you would be wrong. What makes DaVinci stand out from the Adobe products is that it has the ability to replicate the exact same videos to the same standard. However, it is much more beginner friendly and more importantly, it's free. It does have an upgraded studio version, but the free version does just fine, and has most of the same features that the paid version has. Another massive upside to DaVinci Resolve is that it's an all-in-one editing software. This means that instead of running back and forth between Premiere Pro and After Effects, you could just stay in one program and do your editing, motion graphics, animations, and even colour grading in the exact same place. And somehow, Premiere Pro still crashes more often than DaVinci Resolve. Also, in my opinion, not only does DaVinci Resolve Resolve act as a very solid replacement to Premiere Pro, but it also is able to act as a very good replacement to After Effects. Granted, the end result won't look as professional as it would look like in After Effects, but considering DaVinci Resolve is free, you can still create some insanely high quality videos. And before I rate DaVinci, I will preface this by saying that I am a bit biased, as I mainly use DaVinci Resolve, also meaning that this entire video has been edited with DaVinci Resolve. With this being said, I'll be giving DaVinci a 4 out of 5 for usability, a 5 out of 5 for accessibility, and a 4 out of 5 for the results you can achieve with it. Meaning that with a score of 13 out of 15, I might just have to put DaVinci Resolve into S tier. But we still have one more video editor, which I'm going to be honest, I didn't even know existed until a couple of days ago. And it's already been seen across YouTube getting people tens of millions of views just because they're using this software instead of something else. It's called Sora. It was released on the 9th of December. 2024, and in the few weeks that it's been available, it's already broke the internet. If you didn't know, Sora is owned by OpenAI, and it's a video creation tool which utilizes AI to create the videos. However, unlike the other AI video creators that we've seen in the past, the results of this are concerningly realistic. I'm going to put two videos on the screen, and I would like you to choose which one you think was made by AI. It was a trick. Both videos are AI, and although Sora isn't specifically a video editor, the YouTube channel The Door Brothers have used it to create engaging stories, which led them to getting millions of views on multiple videos. I won't show you the videos here because they are, for a lack of a better word, interesting, but they aren't the only channel utilising AI to create stories on YouTube. We aren't sure if this is a bad thing or not, that people are using AI to create YouTube videos, but at the speed that AI has accelerated, who knows what video editing softwares are going to come out of it. With this being said, Sora will get a 3 out of 5 for usability, and a 2 out of 5 for accessibility, because it has just only came out and isn't available in some countries. And finally, it will get a 2 out of 5 for the results. Look, Sora only got 7 out of 15. Let's just say that it isn't my go-to for editing, but you never know. We might get to the point where AI can generate full YouTube videos without you even knowing that it's AI. It's still going above iMovie though, let's be honest.